recycling, from school children to major corporations. The message has been heard around the world. The world's resources are limited. The world's population is not. But one part of the message hasn't received nearly enough attention. Recycling paper and aluminum cans is important. But recycling water is critical. Water is just as recyclable as glass bottles, rubber tires, or any other recoverable resource. We've looked at some of the industries like glass and aluminum and all that, and they're around 70 to 80 percent, in some cases, of recycling their, their products. Looking at California, we recycle less than 1 percent of our total water supply. And the question is, why don't we do more of this? And I think the answer is that we haven't done a very good job of educating the public, first of all, of the needs to do more recycling, and secondly, the safety and the health issues that they're concerned about are not there. It's a tough thing to do, but once you explain the health uh, criteria and protection with recycled water, they're more confident with that. And what we've found is the water industry needs to become an advocate for recycled water, and they need to become advocates within their own industry and with the general public. I think the other part of the public perception that will be particularly powerful once we get the, the ability to demonstrate fairly clearly these technical aspects of it and these safety aspects of it is the environmental benefits of it. This is very compelling. It lessens the burden on natural resources. It makes us able to share those resources with nature itself uh, in this growing consciousness that we have for the environment around us. In many parts of the world, people assume that an abundant supply of pristine water will always be available. To many people, the idea of recycling bottles or cans is one thing. But recycling water is something else. And yet wherever water is found in nature, it's been recycled and transformed countless times over millions of years. Nature is the ultimate recycler of water. It's called the hydrologic cycle. The overall amount of water on the planet never changes. It's only the distribution of it that varies, in liquid form, on the surface or below it, as a vapor in clouds, or as a solid as snow and ice at high altitudes and near the polar caps. Nature even has its own water filtration systems. Water deposited on the surface is scrubbed clean as it passes through the soil on its way to underground basins. Rocks and sand in riverbeds remove impurities from water as it moves downstream. The fact is, every drop of water we've ever used has been recycled over and over again. It's such an integral part of the conservation ethic, uh, having a water reclamation ethic where you recycle water, and in fact all we're doing is treating it the same way nature does, repeating those processes, and coming out with a, uh, a totally acceptable end product that we can use in the community. Recycling water may be a new idea to the general public, but it's been used across the country for years. For agriculture, industry, and in cities of every size for business and residential use. With a water supply that's always constant, as the population grows, so does the demand for new sources of water. To meet that demand, water is being recycled in some very innovative ways. Just south of Atlanta in Clayton County, Georgia, the Clayton County Water Authority is using recycled wastewater to irrigate natural woodlands. In the 1970s, the early 70s, the Clayton County Water Authority was faced with an increased population and a decreased ability to dispose of its wastewater. We had to come up with a unique, innovative method of wastewater disposal. One we looked at was land application. That is an unconventional, in those days, unconventional method of disposing of wastewater. Historically, most wastewater plants treated their waste to secondary standards and discharged into the nearest stream. In this case, the treatment is um, 
capped off by applying the wastewater to the land where you get some additional treatment benefits in the land. The water then flows uh, from the land treatment operation to a uh, storage area and again it's pulled out for drinking water purposes in the process. In addition to that, we are irrigating an 18-hole golf course in this county with reclaimed water. The developer needs water, uh, we need a place to get rid of it, and it has been really a success story here in Clayton County. Some 600 miles to the north, just a few miles from the historic Civil War battle site of Manassas, Virginia, is the Upper Occoquan Sewage Authority, which um, treats wastewater from northern Virginia uh, communities and puts it into the Bull Run River, which flows into the Occoquan Reservoir, and it sits there for a time and then is withdrawn and provides uh, a source for drinking water for that roughly the same area of Northern Virginia. Surprisingly, uh, the uh, Northern Virginia uh, and the Washington metropolitan area is a water short area. Groundwater is not uh, plentiful in the area. We do not have large aquifers. The principal source of water is surface water supplies. And uh, we don't have much storage. The Occoquan Reservoir is the only significant storage reservoir serving the Washington metropolitan area. Uh, the water going into the reservoir is of high quality and the drinking water is of a very high quality. There's no sense on anybody's part that there's any safety problem for public health associated with this. And it's extensively used uh, for fishing. We uh, uh, sell uh, six or seven hundred uh, fishing licenses each year. It's one of the best bass fisheries uh, in this area. In Yuma, Arizona, the United States Bureau of Reclamation operates the largest water recycling plant in the country. The majority of the nation's lettuce is grown within a 50-mile radius of Yuma. The water being recycled here isn't wastewater from sanitation plants, but the runoff from agricultural fields. The flow to the plant comes from an agricultural district wherein the salt content of the water is too high for further reuse, so it is wa wasted to the sea if it is not desalted. This water desalted here is then uh, put back into the river system for reuse. Water quality uh, is very good from the plant. It reduces the salt content from about 3,000 parts per million to about 300 parts per million and this water would meet uh, city water requirements anywhere. Heavy industry has been recycling water for decades. The Bethlehem Steel Plant in Baltimore, Maryland has been using recycled water for over 50 years. To the best of my knowledge, this is the only steel plant in the world that's using treated municipal sewage as a uh, coolant and supply water in, in their uh, processes. In 1942, we recognized the need for a fresh water supply, and in dealing with the city of Baltimore, we take their discharge from their large sewage treatment plant to the extent of about 100 million gallons a day. The water coming from this treatment plant is essentially fresh water. It's treated municipal sewage. And we use this water in uh, all our processes at the plant, and in some cases, some of our uh, solutions that we make up for pickling and plating. On the other side of the coin, Bethlehem Steel sends back to Baltimore City um, uh, what they call a pickle liquor, which is really some of the materials that have been dissolved in some of this water particularly iron chloride, and they send it back to the wastewater treatment plant where they add it to the wastewater treatment plant and it helps precipitate out phosphorus, which is harmful to the Chesapeake Bay. So there's sort of a symbiotic relationship there. Something like that is an, a very good example of water reuse. We couldn't afford to buy that kind of water. The water we get at a very good price from the uh, 
sewage plant. And on top of that, it, it diffuses their discharge throughout the, uh, the Bay Area rather than coming out of one outfall. 3,000 miles away in Los Angeles County, the West Basin Municipal Water District has built one of the largest reclaimed water facilities in the country to serve the water needs of another major industry. All five of the largest refineries in Southern California plus the independents are all within our service area. And they use a tremendous amount of water. A refinery typically uses about 10 MGD of water. They use it for cooling purposes and cooling towers and then they also use it uh, for boiler feed makeup and they're critically dependent on a reliable, continuous supply. So once we explained the benefits of water recycling, uh, did a lot of technical evaluation to show how they could use uh, the water, and were able to come up with some creative financing for them, they've, they've kind of joined in and, and they're partners in the project and uh, we're really looking forward to getting them online. A few miles down the freeway in the city of Irvine, the Irvine Ranch Water District has been a leader in recycling water since its inception. Irvine Ranch Water District? The district was formed in 1961 when the whole area was, uh, had no residents and was largely agricultural. Uh, we have some groundwater, but we were always short of water. And in the water short area, we looked for new ways uh, to make that come to pass. The way that we found that was different than everybody else is reusing our wastewater. And we put in a reclamation system that could be made available to the entire district for landscaping, for schoolyards, for open space, uh, for parks, and uh, areas that uh, homeowner associations maintain uh, in the landscape uh, variety. That created for us a dual distribution system so that we could distribute our treated uh, wastewater in a way that this repurified, reclaimed water uh, could be used and substitute actually for imported water that the area would need. Here at the Water District headquarters, we use reclaimed water through all the drip irrigation systems and drip irrigation is one of the methods that can save tremendous amounts of water. It reduces and almost eliminates all water runoff, all evaporation from traditional spray irrigation systems. We have uh, subsurface irrigation on our turf grass and in fact, the newest school being built in Irvine will have subsurface underground irrigation with reclaimed water uh, throughout the entire play field, eliminating uh, the muddy soccer field on Saturday, being able to water with the reclaimed water since it's underground anytime, day or night, 24 hours a day, whenever the turf grass really needs it. And again, we eliminate cost then for the school district and the community. One of the highest uses throughout the world is bringing it indoor and using it to as toilet flushing water in uh, urinals and restrooms. Found that 70% uh, of the water use was in the, in the office building was actually toilet flushing. And that can be a use then, an expanded use of reclaimed water. This is not the first place in the world to do it, but it is the first place in the United States where we've taken a municipal treatment plant, recycled the water, and put it inside of commercial buildings. It took a lot of work to build the institutional assurances that uh, uh, were put in place by the district with the health departments and with the consuming public. And in fact the building was dual plumbed throughout the design and development process of it and the processing unit to, to make that reclaimed water almost crystal clear in the toilets is right on site there to Geneva building. Again a tremendous asset then for the community and saving a tremendous amount of water, domestic water, for other uses. Perhaps the last remaining challenge is the most difficult to overcome. Not technology or experience, but the public's perception of using water, which has already been used. Historically, the public uh, fears things it doesn't understand. People in my position of water and wastewater have a challenge ahead from public relations. Uh, pure is an ambiguous term, and I'm not sure where it begins or stops. I'm not sure where wastewater becomes drinking water except from a, a technological standpoint. It's all at one time been uh, reclaimed, it's been used over and over. Uh, unlike fossil fuels, we're not running out of water. As our population continues to grow, as we become uh, more and more concerned about having water to protect the environment 
as we have to balance the use of water for agricultural purposes against the environment and human use, my feeling at this time is that as we get more experience, we're going to demonstrate that it is safe and that the public can have confidence as long as the treatment plants are operating effectively. The proof is in the pudding. People want to see it work. They want to know what kind of neighborhoods it's working in and actually have that firsthand experience. Uh, we've been uh, reclaiming water and using it in our neighborhoods uh, for over the past 20 years. Uh, we've had to be pioneers to be able to do it as the town developed and to kind of have it grow as a built-in ethic uh, in our water resource management planning. The water industry needs to become an advocate for recycled water and they need to become advocates within their own industry and with the general public. And then the other thing is, is we need to integrate recycled water into our planning process on all levels. A planning commission should ask when a new development comes online, is there any potential for recycled water? A um, homeowners association should go and talk to the water industry to say, is there any potential for recycled water? And the water industry, when we do these strategic plans and integrated resources planning process, which is the latest buzzword, you have to take recycled water as a component. It's not something that, oh, well, let's play around with this a little bit. It's the wet stuff and it has to become an integrated part of your water supply. It's just as important as surface water, it's just as important as groundwater, and it's just as important as conservation. Um, I think you'll find that reuse becomes almost an environmental imperative, and I think there'll be a strong public desire to find a way to both use conservation and reuse as a way to balance those environmental impacts and still have a sustainable economy and uh, living environment. And I think when you put that package together properly, both the environmental imperative and the fact that this is safe um, when everything is done right, uh, we'll get there. <laughs>